Welcome to The Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're making something called Everyday Spicy Carrots, and it is out of this Traditionally Fermented Foods by Shannon Stronger. We're just gonna go ahead and can up, or ferment this recipe. And it's gonna be similar, but not exact. And because it calls for three cloves of garlic, which three cloves of garlic is never enough for literally anything. So we're just gonna do a whole uh, bulb of garlic. And we're gonna get a peel. So it calls for three cloves of garlic, which we're gonna do way more. And then it calls for a quarter to a half of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Obviously we're gonna do more than that. And then it calls for just uh, carrot, salt, and water. All right, so now that we have all of our garlic peel, I just want all the papers to stick to my wet hands. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna fill up the jar. And we got our seal on here. And we're gonna use the Fido style jar because these ones I have found with my own personal experience that they ferment just fine in this jar and I do, it lets out all the CO2. It doesn't, and it just doesn't, I haven't had any experiences of it molding. So do your own research, do what you wish at your own comfort level, but I'm using the Fido style jars because I'm out of all my pickle pipes. So all we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna crush the garlic here back of our knife. Just looking to kind of break it open. We're not going for teeny tiny here. There we go. Okay, so the recipe calls for a quarter to a half of a teaspoon. So we're gonna go on the high side of that since we're, I'm pro this is probably gonna be roughly a double recipe of it. So we're gonna go with a very heaping teaspoon and a half. So I really like two teaspoons. Might be a lot, but it's gonna be good. All right, so what we're gonna do next is just cut up all the carrots. And put them in the jar. All right, so now that we have all the carrots and everything in the jar, we're just gonna add the salt to it. This one, it just says to add the salt and then to add the water to it. It's not making a separate brine. So in the original recipe, it calls for one tablespoon and then it says one tablespoon and then two tablespoons if you're fermenting at 80 degrees or higher. We're gonna be under 80 degrees, uh, but this is basically a double recipe. So we're gonna do two tablespoons. Okay, and then we're just gonna add enough water to cover. So now we're just gonna put the lid on it. So we're just gonna stick this in the corner with the rest of the ferments and we're gonna forget about it for a little while. This one says it's uh, between seven to 21 days. We'll see how it actually goes. It says if it's fermenting from 60 to 80 degrees, it's gonna be between seven to 21 days. And that is completely dependent on your taste. Oftentimes it says to, wait, does this one say? Yeah, it says seven to 21 days or until the carrots are quite tangy is the way that she words it. It says to be sure to burp the jar every day. And so we are gonna come through, we're still gonna burp it with this one. We wanna make sure that nothing builds up in it. And the best way, the way that you do it with this one is you just kind of, yep, go like that. You don't even have to lift the lid. You just kind of pop it and then close it, just like that, and that's burping. And the way you do it with the mason top, mason jar is like, say you have this, and then you got the lid on top of it, right? And so you're just gonna kind of open it and close it real quick, and that's burping it. The reason that you wanna burp it is so you don't get a buildup of CO2 inside of the jar and it could potentially build up enough pressure to be able to explode. And if anything, it would likely, if you're using a mason top jar, it would be much more likely that it will buckle the lid and it'll just start oozing out like a lot of liquid all over the place. Cause it's just gonna have this build up and it's like opening up a soda basically. So I will bring you along if I do anything along the way with this ferment. I don't anticipate I'll do anything beyond just taste testing it. 
I might bring you along when we figure out roughly how long it takes to actually get this to be under a 4.0 pH, just because I'm kind of curious about it. I'm doing it with a lot of different ferments. It's interesting to see how it actually works out. So I will bring you along for anything notable along the way. Other than that, we'll see you, we'll see you for the taste test at the end. It's been 15 days since we left our everyday spicy carrots recipe to and left it to ferment. And so now we're gonna go ahead and give it our first taste test. I haven't tried this yet. It kind of smells like maybe it might be a little bit fermented, but I don't think it's gonna be ready at all. And oh, and there's nothing on top. You can see, I can't angle it to where you can see, can you? Uh, there's nothing on top. Uh, there, the, you know, there's little particles and things, but no mold, nothing bad. Okay. That's not even mildly spicy. <laughs> not even a little bit. Like there's nothing, there's absolutely zero. That's a bummer. So I'm gonna change this recipe up just a little bit. I'll be right back. So with this, I want to inoculate it with a little bit of microbes just to kind of get it, get the process going. It's been 15 days. It doesn't taste it fermented whatsoever. Certainly is not doing that at all. And this one says, it should ferment for seven to four, 21 days. So it's been fermenting for half of that, in between that time. So you'd think it would be doing something by now, but since it's carrots, it's not. I've, I've never had luck with carrots fermenting. Um, they're good, they're tasty, they're wonderful once they get fermented, but it takes a lot of time or it takes a starter. And I don't wanna wait that much longer because they are starting to already, already get, a, not soft, but they're starting to soften. So this is a recipe that I made. These are from, I believe they were from Cherry Bombs. I made this a long time ago. It made it probably, I wanna say at least six months ago, probably a little bit longer. So, and it's delicious. We just, it got tossed in the back of my fridge and my fermented fridge and I haven't been using it much. Well, I mean, I have, but not as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use some of this. It is deliciously spicy and fermented. So I'm just gonna add probably about a tablespoon worth of hot sauce in here. Kinda give it a little bit of a mix without going crazy. This is a stainless steel spoon. You don't wanna do this with anything that's not stainless steel. Ideally wood's better, but I don't have one of those cute little wooden spoons, so. Okay. So we got our starter culture added in there. And on top of that, we're gonna add a lot more of the red pepper flakes. Cause I do want this to actually be spicy and it is not, not even a, a teensy bit. So I'd say I added probably another tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna mix this in. And with this, since, since, I mean, now that they're all totally dry and they're just gonna be floating on the top, but once they get saturated a little bit, they should be sinking down to the bottom or at least sinking into the brine. So I'm gonna be paying a little bit of extra careful attention to this over the next couple days, just to make sure that all these sink to the bottom. But I mean, it really doesn't matter a whole lot with this style of fermenting. If you have this kind of lid, I've noticed you don't really have to do it, but do your own research and and do it at your own risk. In my personal experience, it's never been a problem with the flip top lid with the gasket on it. No problem. So we're just gonna set that to ferment and we will see you again probably in about a week or so. All right, so we are on day number 23 of our spice, everyday spicy ferment, carrot ferment, carrot pickle ferment, whatever you wanna call it, okay. So as you can see, no mold on top. I haven't cleaned this out. If you remember last time we went ahead and added more heat to it. So hopefully that's kind of penetrated in there a bit and it's, it'll be just, it'll have more kick to it. Cause last time it was kind of bland. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Okay, I'll get some from deep in there. There we go. This ferment is definitely done. It is well fermented. It's still nice and crunchy. It tastes delicious, but for me and my heat preference, 
I'd still double it. <laughs> I like things really, really spicy. I like things super hot, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much add like hot sauce and spices to just about everything. Like really hot spices like Cameroon pepper and, and tons of, um, ooh, cayenne. I'm gonna add a little more cayenne to this just to give, just to amp up the heat a little bit. But I just, myself personally, and my husband as well, we both really enjoy heat. You probably, if you don't really like heat, this, the first one is probably gonna be great for you. If you like heat, the second one, the added heat, this one, you're probably gonna enjoy it. It's not, for me, it's not so overpowering that I don't wanna eat it. It's not so, um, it still has a decent amount of kick, like I can still feel a little bit of tingle on my tongue, but it's not, it's not overpowering. It's not anything that makes me kind of hesitate to eat it. So it's enjoyable and I really like it. It has a very unique flavor to it and I just enjoy this. It's really good. So if you think that you are going to enjoy this recipe, I totally recommend that you give it a try. Uh, it tastes like pickles, but crunchier and a little bit like carrots. But other than that, it just tastes like a spicy carrot or a spicy pickle, sorry. And so it's really good. I recommend you try it. It's probably, it's something that you could probably do most places you could do year round. Most places you go to, at least like Costco and all those other places, like you can find carrots almost any time of the year. Unlike cucumbers, pickling cucumbers, which are kind of difficult, at least in my area, it's kind of difficult to find them like in the middle of the winter. So if you just want to create a delicious, unique, and awesome ferment in the middle of winter or in the middle of any time of year, this one is definitely it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time for another fermenting video. Bye.